what did Intercept DC Bureau Chief Ryan Grimm think about last night's debate? He's here now to tell us. Hey, Ryan, how are you? What's going on? You want to come sit in my you. chair? So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah. for jumping like in yesterday. Over. You like it over there? <laughs> <laughs> all right. What did you think, Ryan? What, what were your top line takeaways from last night? I told you all about Warren. Yeah. What did I tell you? You did. Yeah. You did. So, you know, for people that started following politics in, in 2015, you know, they know Elizabeth Warren as the person who resisted entreaties to run for president, then didn't endorse in the Democratic primary when she had a chance to kind of boost Sanders. Um, and then they've been, and then running against Sanders in, in 2020. That's, that's kind of yep. how they see her. She, when she came to Washington in 2009, she became kind of a progressive star by, uh, with, with viral moments attacking villains. Um, Tim Geithner was the mm -hmm. kind of the number one villain she'd go after. She was the chairman of this committee that was overseeing the bailout, and she would drag Geithner before her, and she would just absolutely embarrass him. Then she brought uh, Wells Fargo CEO to the banking committee, um, and uh, basically said, "You ought to be fired." Like just <laughs> absolutely slaughtered him, yeah. and he was fired. Yeah. Like and and her kind of viral interrogation of him. People credit that with leading to him getting fired. And th these are just a couple of moments. She'd do this to bank regulators, other Wall Street. And so this was her thing. It, she kind of pioneered what AOC does now mm -hmm. with, with these viral hearing moments. And so that's why everybody was like, that, that's a major reason, the CFPB and other accomplishments, people were like, this is the champion. But, this, but then when she had a foil in Joe Biden throughout this campaign, who she tangled with for 10 years, from the mid-90s to the 2000s over bankruptcy bill, she never brought that out. She, tr she was very kind of, I don't know, she struggled with the idea of attacking villains within the Democratic Party in a Democratic primary. She didn't mind doing it when it was the Obama administration. Well, she didn't mind coming after primary. Bernie either. Well, in, the, in recent weeks, she started going after Bernie's supporters. Yeah. What's, what's, Very what's, odd. Very like, weird. What's, what's going on here? Um, and so that, at this debate, she found her villain. Um, and she brought back that old Warren. Mm. Um, and even, even in last night's debate, when she was asked, you know, what about Bernie's supporters? She was like, as I've said, everybody is responsible for their supporters, which is which weird. Is which very is odd. Uh, but then she, then she immediately yeah, pivots yeah. and said, but Michael Bloomberg. And then she just goes right yes, back in right, right, right. to Michael Bloomberg. I just have to say, does anyone actually want to have that standard applied to them where they're <laughs> yeah, responsible for everything that every, right. I mean, that's just that's, insanity. But you're right. right. She clearly trained her fire more so on Michael right. Bloomberg last night and was extremely effective. Um, you know, I did a piece here the other day about how I was begging her to run in 2015 exactly for those yeah. moments that you're you're talking, I mean, she was a champion. She challenged the Obama administration when no one else would in a way that was truly courageous. And then you watch this evolution of she doesn't get in the presidential race. Okay, I understand that's a heavy burden. But then the way she played the endorsement game and the way that she has played this campaign was just so disappointing to me. Mm -hmm. and I was someone who was completely open to her, right, and used to be a champion of her. This did feel like a return to kind of those roots. My question is, is it too little too late? Because here we are. I mean, Nevada, we've already had more than 70,000 people vote. Last time around in the caucuses, only 89,000 people voted total. So a lot of people have already voted there. A lot of people have already voted in California, which yeah. could be another strong state for her. Not to mention she, she hasn't had um, the fundraising up until I'm sure she got a bump right. last, night last night or to something. be able to really compete broadly in Super Tuesday the way she needs to. She hasn't demonstrated much, if any, strength in diverse communities. So at this point, you know, can she make up the ground that she needs to? No. It, I mean, not, not in a kind of normal primary way. Mm, so yeah. in other words, she's, she's not going to do well in Nevada. She won't do well in South Carolina. Um, she probably won't do terribly well in Super Tuesday. Her, her path is interestingly kind of still the same one, which was n if nobody else wins and there's the possibility of a contested convention right. that, that she remains a possibility. Before last night, her plan to be that compromise candidate was to be really nice to everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now her plan is just destroy everybody. Right. <laughs> destroy everybody. <laughs> she but it's the she same, came for everyone. But it's the same path, yes. interestingly. It's like the, the peace between the lion I and the I could lamb. see it, Ryan, for the Democratic establishment being like, well, she's progressive, so she got that progressive lane, but she's not like Bernie. She's not like an existential threat to her way. I, I could certainly right. see that. What did you make of that contested convention moment last night? Mm. I'm focusing a lot of energy on it because I think it's, right. it could be one of the most consequential moments of the entire debate. Well, to me, the most important part of it 
was not their answers, but the fact that they assumed the premise, mm -hmm. which is that Bernie Sanders is going to go into the convention with the plurality. With the plurality. Yeah. If you think about that entire stage, accepting that premise as the most likely outcome, and you rewind one month ago, just, yeah, just a month ago, right. That's, right. A, that's a stunning turn of events for, for this party. And Warren last night very likely cleared the path for Sanders. Like this, this progressive team, mm. you know, which was rocky over the last several weeks, like the, the upshot is so likely you, to be. You see that as an alliance, because she did say that she's going to take those delegates all the way to the convention. Right, but yeah. the, the, it functionally okay. what happened mm. is that she blunted Bloomberg's momentum. Biden's momentum is blunted. It's gone. Yeah. Buddha Judge and Klobuchar have no support among minority communities, so they're, they're dead people walking in Nevada and South mm -hmm. Carolina. And so if that's the product of last night's debate, that is a huge win for Bernie Sanders. Right. And it was delivered by Elizabeth right. Warren. And it wasn't necessarily her intent to help him. But that is But that she's is smart. The, she knows that, that if I train my fire on Bloomberg, mm -hmm. Bernie's going to benefit. It, she could have last night decided for some reason that she was just going to go all in on Bernie. Like she that had was a few a moments, though. I, I'm just curious, yeah. I get what her strategy is going into this. And it's not just Warren. I mean, what did you make also of the Pete and Amy kind of intra feud? It, it seemed like a Warren, Pete, Amy feud. I said this in the beginning. Yeah. I think it's because they're all fighting over the same voters, yeah. the upper middle class white people. Also, and I've talked to uh, a lot of people who worked on a bunch of different campaigns about this phenomenon as you get deeper into mm -hmm. a primary and emotions take over as well. And, and on the part of uh, Pete, uh, Amy, and Elizabeth Warren, they, they do not like each other yeah. deeply. And so their advisors will tell them, do X, Y, and Z. Well, Warren and they, Amy seem to like each other, right? Yes and no. I, I think... I mean, Everybody they, they, dislikes Pete deeply. Yes. That so, is very clear. Pete, yeah, Bernie right. in particular, his loathing for Pete really came Everyone out. Right. Everything, much has everything is relative. Loathing. Yeah, Every, for Pete. Everything is relative to Pete. But they both savaged him personally. They did. I mean, he... Like Amy said, he basically yeah. called her dumb, mm -hmm. um, but she, you know, she did blunder on that on, on yeah, that question. Bad, but but oh, uh, Elizabeth Warren said to him, "All basically, all you are is a vehicle, empty vehicle for your own ambition." It was some quote almost exactly like that. Um, and then Amy said to him, "All you do is uh, memorize yeah, talking, points talking, points things, talking points, <laughs> talking points, and things, which was awesome, <laughs> but, and things because she's so just angry." <laughs> <laughs> the rage is helpful I, respect, there, I love it. Which oh, yeah. I, yeah. I very much appreciate it. Even in the spin room afterwards, Klobuchar, just, she was just going in on Pete. Really? Yeah. Oh, I oh. missed that. <laughs> I had to go to bed. Yeah. Um, I do think, though, your point is correct, which is um, Bernie has much more of a clear path to winning a majority of the delegates mm -hmm. and not having to mess around with whatever they would do to him at the convention after last night than he did before. I mean, if you're his team, who do you even consider your top rival at this point? I think you'd still have right. to say Bloomberg. But because of his money, right? Because of his money, right? He can do whatever he wants with that money, and he's going to be there for the long haul. But, you know, Bernie wins Nevada, and then he potentially wins South Carolina, and you come into Super Tuesday where he's got a lead in California and Texas, that's a pretty strong yeah. hand to play. Yeah, and the wild card is, you know, does, does, uh, does Bloomberg go negative yes. on Bernie? Like, yeah, we were talking about this yesterday. Like hundreds of millions of negative ads. But on, under the current trajectory, because you need this 15% to get delegates, if all of these candidates keep hovering in the high single digits, low double digits, Bernie could get 30% of the vote in a state and wind up with 50% of the delegates, mm -hmm. which would be so ironic for it to be unfair in Bernie's favor. Right. <laughs> like yeah. undemocratic in his favor. Well, that's the question, Ryan. Are we going to start, what do you think? Are we going to see these, the three-way split? Because you have to 15% viability. Three-way split is how Sanders does not get a contested, does, does get a contested convention. Do you think that Biden is going to implode enough or Bloomberg that Bernie won't have to deal with that? We'll see how low information Biden's base right. voters are. Like if, if are there five, 10% who are just paying so little attention that they barely even notice mm -hmm. that he's completely flaming out. And so then they still go to the ballot and they're like, ah, Biden. So if he gets, if he holds on to, you know, 7%. You know, now, when Biden drops out historically, because he has a lot of experience yes. dropping out of presidential he elections, does. He, does. he does it fast. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, he's just gone. He's just done. So you might, South, the night of South Carolina, if he gets beaten, Boom. Could be done. He, I he think might that just, will happen he might just if he court. loses South but, Carolina. But then his name's on the ballot. Exactly. In two days later. Like, Saturday night is South Carolina, and then Tuesday, 
the following Tuesday, mm -hmm. Super Tuesday. Yeah. So he could still, even if he drops out, soak up 5%, and then if Pete and Amy soak up 5%, Warren, 10, 12, Bloomberg, 14, like that is a disaster scenario for yeah. the establishment with everybody under viability. Under. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me ask you that this, Brian, quickly. Um, you know, Warren, I think we all agree, very hard to see a path to her winning the nomination. If she were to drop, do you, do you think she would endorse? Who do you think she would endorse? That's a, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. At the beginning of the campaign, I would have said she's going to endorse, she would endorse Bernie. Um, if she drops out and vice versa. That when Bernie was at his nadir, if he drops out, he endorsed Warren. I don't know, I, 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 I can't say that with confidence anymore. Yeah. Um, it's, it's to me just as likely that she endorses nobody. I don't think she endorses against mm -hmm. Sanders. Like, I don't think like, she could do, she's not gonna do Bloomberg. She's not gonna do, she she not gonna do, again. Gonna do again. But yeah. so we'll see, we'll see. I mean, there'll be a lot of pressure on her. But like she said, she's, she's if, if she can keep collecting delegates, she has every incentive to go to the convention. Just like the same way that Joe Crowley kind of stayed on the, on the WFP ballot yeah. into the general election. He's just hanging out there on a chance that something unexpected happens. He, he was hoping that AOC would just kind of self-immolate. Right. And then she didn't. And so his name's on the ballot and he got 5% or mm. whatever. Yeah. And so I think if you're running against Bernie Sanders, you're just kind of hanging out, hoping that he self-immolates and just... Well, Keep open. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Thanks, Ryan. Next, to weigh in on how she thinks Sam, Senator Sanders did, National Press Secretary for the Sanders campaign, Brianna Joy Gray. She joins us. That's next.